One of the most important things about having a forum like FAME is to propose a concrete alternative to the World Water Forum. We as the Global Water Justice Movement don't believe that the World Water Forum is a legitimate place uh, to speak about um, the policies on water. We don't think it's a, it's a corporate trade show basically and we don't think that it's actually an open space where, where people can actually contribute to what they believe is important. Um, it's organized by the World Water Council since 1997 and the World Water Council is basically led by, by the private water companies and it, it works for their interest. We don't see this in other resources, so why is water, why are water policies being discussed in a corporate trade show instead of under the auspices of the UN or a different kind of, of forum or, or people summit? So what we think is important is to have something like FAME to show that there is a people's movement who want to provide alternatives which are not the solutions that the private companies are proposing, it's not the high-tech expensive innovations that they are proposing, but that there are alternatives to privatization and the fact that this is an open space where everyone can come to and speak what they think about. And we don't think that water is is a resource that should be used for profit. It is a common good that belongs to all of us and should be managed with, with concrete community participation and community involvement. Um, and one of the big examples we have is this fame is open to everyone, it's free. The World Water Forum costs 700 euros to go in for the week. So they cannot at the same time say they're listening to all stakeholders when it's almost impossible for your average citizen to even go inside. The most important thing that comes out of fame is the fact that I think we've already won. I mean, at least in the short term, in this Marseille battle of the two forums, in that sense, we have won. We have almost the same numbers of participants. We've reached a high level. We have more than 3,000 participants in fame. And our budget, compared to the World Water Forum, which had a budget of 38 million, and ours was almost non-existent, um, I think is already a great success in that sense. Uh, the, other, the other most important thing that comes out of fame, I think, are the concrete proposals that are coming out of all of the different workshops and the 12 different themes. And then the other very important thing for us as a global water justice movement is it gives us a chance to all come together and meet and discuss our strategies and how we want to go forward and what kind of movement we want to build how do we make sure that the movement is sustainable and what are the new challenges that face us what are the new strategies we need to to do because every time we have a strong victory the other side co-ops our language and says oh yes we think this as well and then they morph it into another argument so what we need to do and what the important thing is, is really to discuss how we're going to be quick and creative and to be a step ahead of them instead of just reacting with counter proposals every time. And I think this is one of the big successes we have this time is that we're moving faster with them so that we actually have concrete strategies to, to propose and that the global water justice movement is really solidifying and we have a new energy of people. I mean, you see the difference just walking into the World Water Forum and walking into fame. We have so much energy here and so much good discussions and vibes that, I mean, in that sense, I think we've already been, we've already been a great success. One of the most important issues that we're talking about here, which was not treated by the World Water Forum, is how to actually prevent water pollution. So what the World Water Forum keeps talking about is what are the technological, technological solutions we have to treat all these bad industrial practices, bad agricultural practices, without actually tackling where the water pollution is coming from. It's just we have all these technological innovations which cost so much money, um, we'll carry on letting the industry behave the way they want, we'll carry on letting agriculture be intensive, monoculture, um, and then we'll find ways to treat it expensively so that we can make more money for it. So one of the most important issues we're talking here at FAME is how to integrate you know, the anti-fracking movements, the anti-dam movements, the agricultural food sovereignty movements, how we can work all together to make sure that water is managed in a holistic way um, and that it's not only the, the water sector. So this is one of the important issues. 
Another important issue is how to manage urban, urban and rural water services as well. So one of the basic themes of FAME is that water should not be privatized, it should be public. So we're talking about public and community alternatives which are available um, instead of privatization. For example, public-public partnerships where you have public bodies which can partner to improve their services. So you can also have a northern public service and a southern public service which team up to exchange best practices, transfer of expertise, without um, any intention to gain profit from the partnership. Um, so that's one of the most important ones. And then another important issue is, of course, women in water, the role that women have in water management, and is the problem of water in, in so many countries actually an obstacle to emancipation for women, because women are usually the ones who take care of water in the household. Um, and then lastly, one of the important issues we're dealing with as well is to remember that fame is in the context of all of the global meetings which are coming up as well. So it's not just an isolated event. So we're also focusing on the link with Rio Plus 20, which will happen in June, and the whole discussion of the green economy, which is happening now, where they basically want to commodify everything in nature. So we're not just talking about water services anymore, but water as a resource itself. I mean, this is not a conclusion. This is not the end of something. There was a lot of organizing work that came into this, but this is one of the big seeds that we've planted in the global water movement and, and that we will carry on fighting this. Um, and every time we lose, it'll just make us even stronger. Every time we win, it'll make us even stronger and we, we won't give up. So this is just one big important step in, in, the, long, in the long term.